Hey guys, Car Vlog. I'm answering uh, some questions that are put to me on YouTube. Somebody asked me about Python, and I can't find the question through the YouTube app here, so I'm going to go off of memory. So essentially, you have somebody who did a bunch of Python courses, not mine, but other courses, and still felt after spending all this time and money that they didn't know how to actually write Python code. I guess beyond simple things, you're kind of lost. Let me just say two things about that. That could be because of the type of code training you did in Python. I don't know what you did. It could be like I've seen so many times where they just, they just teach you little snippets and they don't give an idea what the broad picture is. It could be that you've done some project-based courses where they teach you the walkthrough, the tutorial, walkthrough is done but they don't actually teach you why they're doing things so it's not just the how you need to know you need to know but why I don't know what the situation is with this particular guy so they asked about my course well my course bridged that gap between knowing snippets of Python code and actually being able to do something my general philosophy about learning to code is based on my own experience learn, learning to code and being a professional developer and having trained so many people over the years. Um, what I do is I teach the foundation, the core principles of programming. So in Python, I'd be teaching the basic syntax, what it's about, the ver versions of Python, where Python is used, and I run through many many little tasks if you will with Python to show you how it comes together so I'll come into some detail explain the how and the why then pull out broader sense I don't have any expansive big projects in my course simply because I didn't feel there was a need to because the hole in the market in terms of the educational market was covering those foundational principles properly and giving people the perspective I just described. Once you have that, that unlocks the door, if you will. That opens up the whole world of Python and all the Python tutorials that you can find. There's so many free Python tutorials online that are fine, are good for people who have this foundational knowledge. That's the thing that's hard to come across. Now, you may have put it together if you've done five or ten courses. I don't know. That's why I offer a money-back guarantee on the courses, because not, you know, one shoe does not fit all sizes, right? You have to see if it works for you. What most people come away with, 99.8%, is that they they find that doing my courses, my Python course or any of my courses, they come away with a deeper knowledge of programming code. Uh, they understand the how and the why. Once you have that, then you can go and just choose whatever direction you want to go into in terms of Python. So let's say you've, you've done a, the basic Python course, you understand the foundations, you know about the versions of Python, you know about installing it and configuring it, you understand how the code is laid out, you understand the basic constructs within any programming languages, functions and methods and variables and collection types, and then how to trap user input, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. From there, what I would suggest is you then you choose whichever direction you want to get into. So let's say you want to get into Python AI. You want to do AI programming. Then just type in Python AI tutorial. And, and you'll find a dozen tutorials that are free that will just walk you step by step. But what, what those tutorials lack is all that foundation training that makes those the t tutorials approachable. So if you've done my course, all of a sudden those walkthroughs will become very approachable, very understandable, and you'll be able to take care of things with no problems. As another example, let's say you want to get into Python web app development. So you have uh, some options there. Django is the most popular web framework, and uh, Flask is another one, more lightweight. Now. Unlike PHP, where PHP, you just write some code and you throw it up onto a server and it runs, with Python, it, it's a general purpose language, so you have to provide a framework around it to make it work on uh, the web, although you could do Python CGI, but generally speaking, you're going to be using a framework like Django or Flask. So again, 
once you know your foundations, then all you have to do is go to the Django homepage and it's just really a quick start guys. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if you're doing Python web, of course you're gonna to need to know the web languages as HTML5, CSS3, and a bit of JavaScript. And then you can just approach that and just do some, some of the tutorials and go from A to Z with the tutorials. So let's say you wanted to do Python web development. Is you do one of these Django install tutorials and just do a basic CRUD operation tutorial with Django and uh, you take it from there. If you want to put in a shopping cart, you can type in shopping cart Django and you'll find a shopping cart in Django and you just grab it, put it in. Which you have to understand as a professional developer. As a developer, especially in the early years, the first two, three years, you're constantly learning things as projects come up. And that's why I always emphasize learn those basics and foundations really well. That's why I emphasize that and teach that because that's where it's lacking in the market. Everybody is very tutorial centric or snippet centric. Uh, I, uh, I provide that foundation. So whether or not my Python course will help you having somebody who's already done five or six Python course courses depends on the structure of the particular course that you've done or the courses that you've done. If you're feeling a little lost and you're already comfortable with the basics of Python, at least you feel that you are, then I would just find any number of walkthrough tutorials in Python in whatever direction you want to go in, AI, machine learning, or robotics, or Python web, or server automation. I think you mentioned you did some sort of server automation stuff. Just, just do it. Just do it. You have to understand that you're, not, you're never going to come into any job, well, at least not in the first few years, knowing everything from A to Z. There's always something you're going to have to figure out and learn. You know, at this point, since I've been doing things for 20 years when it comes to web app development, I've, I've done so much that it's rare that I come across anything new. Nonetheless, in the early stages, I was always learning things on the go. And what I discovered back in those days is that whenever I ran into some bigger problems with any type of work I was involved with, the problems were, generally speaking, a result of uh, me not having a fundamental grasp of some foundational concept that was a key to whatever it was I was doing. Back in those days, the other thing that would run, you would run into problems was just the fact that the technologies were immature. Things wouldn't work the way they were supposed to work. That has largely gone away, especially with the mature platforms. Anyway, I hope that helps. Um, just keep at it, man. Just you got, you got to stretch your neck out a little bit when you're going from beginner to a professional developer. What do I mean by stretch your neck? You got to be willing to go out there and you know go into the dark room, go into that area where you're not exactly sure about everything. Don't worry. If you have your foundations, you'll be able to figure it out fairly easily. That's pretty much it. Bye-bye.